Good evening. It's good to have you gather in the Lord's house to worship. Um, this weekend we are going to hear about God's commandments. They're good, but they're only good because Jesus makes it that way. He gives us clean hearts. He helps us to follow God's commands. And there are beautiful blessings when we walk with the Lord in his commandments. So we'll follow the order of worship, which is service of word and sacrament, uh, starting with the first page, the first hymn, hymn 284. We'll begin uh, by singing those stanzas. How precious is the book divine by inspiration given. To heaven, its light descending from above our gloomy world to cheer. Bethays a Savior's boundless love and brings his glories near. It shows to us our wandering ways and where our feet have trod but brings to view the matchless grace of a forgiving God this lamb through all the dreary night of life shall guide our way till we Behold the clearer light of an eternal day. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us now to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. We join. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love. For the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world. And for those who offer here their worship and praise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Oh, 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 amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. 
O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal word of the Father, you came to live with us you made your father known you washed us from our sins in your own blood you are the king of glory you are the lord O oh lord our lord how glorious is your name in all the earth Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, preserve the congregation of believers with your never-failing mercy. Help us to avoid whatever is wicked and harmful and guide us in the way that leads to our salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. may be seated. The Word of God tonight focuses on God's commands, but not just the commands, also on his blessings in the gospel. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and then 6 through 9. God's Word promises and gives blessings. Other people may not understand where our blessings come from, but they can see it. In the Word, God's law shows us our sins and God's gospel gives us our forgiveness and salvation. This amazing Word is to be held closely and shared. So now, Israel, listen to the statutes and the ordinances that I am teaching you and carry them out so that you may live and so that you may enter the land the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving to you and take possession of it. Do not add to the word that I am commanding you, and do not subtract from it, so that you keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you. Keep them and put them into practice, because in this way your wisdom and your understanding will be recognized by all the people who hear about all these statutes, and they will say, This great nation is certainly a wise and understanding people, because what other great nation is there that has a God as close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call on him, calling being prayer there? What other great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances as righteous as this entire law that I am presenting to you today? But guard yourselves and guard your whole being, or you could say soul there, diligently so that you do not forget the things that your eyes have seen, and so that those things do not disappear from your heart all the rest of the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. This is the word of our Lord, the first lesson. We'll move on to the New Testament, to James chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. We are to receive with humility the word planted in us. It is able to save our souls. When the word of God is planted in us, we do what it says, which makes us truly free. We are free to love and help others. Every good, a and every good act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the lights, who does not change or shift like a shadow. Just as he planned, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would be 
the kind of first fruits of his creations. Remember this, my dear brothers, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Certainly a man's anger does not bring about what is right before God. So after getting rid of all moral filthiness and overflowing wickedness, receive with humility the word planted in you. It is able to save your souls. Be people who do what the word says, not people who only hear it. Such people are deceiving themselves. In fact, if anyone hears the word and does not do what it says, he's like the man who carefully looks at his own natural face in a mirror. Indeed, he carefully looks at himself. Then he goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like. But the one who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continues to do so, since he does not hear and forget, but actually does what it says, that person will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself to be religious but deceives his own heart because he does not bridle his tongue, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled in the sight of God the Father is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord, the second lesson. Alleluia, your words become a joy to me and the delight of my heart. Alleluia, we sing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These words are written that we may be that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise for the gospel reading. The gospel for this weekend is written in Mark chapter 7, various verses as they are listed for you, starting with verse 1. Man-made rules or commands will falsely suggest that we can save ourselves. God's law reveals our sin-filled hearts and shows us our desperate need for a Savior. Only when Jesus cleanses our hearts from sin can we embrace God's law and receive its blessing. The reading now. The Pharisees and some of the experts in the law came from Jerusalem and gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating bread with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. In fact, the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they scrub their hands with a fist holding to the traditions of the el tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions they adhere to, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, kettles, and dining couches. The Pharisees and the experts in the law asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders? Instead, they eat bread with unclean hands. He answered them, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain. They're teaching human rules as if they were doctrines. You abandon God's commandment but hold to human tradition like the washing of pitchers and cups and you do many other such things. He called the crowd to him again and he said, Everyone listen to me and understand. There is nothing outside of a man that can make him unclean by going into him. But the things that come out of a man are what make a man unclean. In fact, from within, out of people's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual sins, theft murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and make a person unclean. Hence the forgiveness of sins being the most important thing. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. 
You may be seated. We'll join in the singing of the hymn of the day, hymn 286. The law commands and makes us know what duties to a God we hold, but gospel must guilt and sin and shows how vile our hearts have been the gospel Savior Jesus. Amen. The Word of God for our meditation is Deuteronomy 4, the verses that were read this evening as the first lesson. You've heard that, so we pray. Dear Lord, um, we know and love our Savior Jesus. Um, sometimes, though, your commandments, we know that we keep, don't have to keep them for salvation, but what do we do with them? Show us tonight what a great blessing they are as we uh, live and uh, follow our dear Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear people of the Lord, do you know what a bucket list is? I have a little paragraph from a, a news article from YouGov, uh, and they say this. A bucket list is a catalog of meaningful experiences and accomplishments that a person would like to have before they die or kick the bucket. It comes from that. What do Americans say is on their bucket list? Among those who have a bucket list, the top item isn't necessarily to see the seven wonders of the world or accomplish an impressive feat, you know, like running a marathon or something like that. It's far simpler. According to YouGov data, that there's a polling company in England, two in five Americans who have a bucket list say one of the items on their list is to get healthier or lose weight. I have to admit, I wouldn't think of that being on a bucket list, but apparently people do have that there. You know, this fits in a little bit with what I'm going to talk about tonight because Moses is at the end of his life, and I'm sure that he had a to-do list, at the very least, maybe even a bucket list. But what he really does tonight, and he's going to do this for you and me too because the Holy Spirit wants us to listen to Moses here, He's going to give us a spiritual bucket list. And I like the bucket list, at least my impression, I've never had one, but if you try to get certain things done before you retire or die and uh, you, you cross them off the list, I guess you wouldn't have to do them anymore. But that isn't true with healthy living and it certainly is not true with the spiritual bucket list that Moses provides us on. This is something we're going to do again and again until the day we die and, and we leave this earth. Um, uh, healthy living is a good thing. There's blessings connected with that. 
um, with spiritual life in God's word. There are tremendous blessings of which Moses is going to highlight you with his blessings. So we turn to the Lord's word. This is really the Lord here today working through Moses, but we have uh, the bucket list for uh, the life-giving word, or I would say in connection with the life-giving word. And the list is on uh, the outline there in, in your booklet and also on the screen. You know, school started and a lot of kids are going back to school. And uh, I, one of my memories always was the first day you'd sit there and the teacher would say, this is what we're going to do this year. This is what uh, how I expect you to behave in the classroom and these are some assignments or things we're going to try to accomplish. I guess I always paid attention um, because I didn't want to miss out at the beginning. You know, you start off on a bad But I do know that probably at least once in my life, you get right before Christmas break and the teacher might have some announcements or things that they want to explain and you're like, I know what she's going to say or he's going to say to that because you're distracted by Christmas holidays and, and things like that and I don't know if that ever happened to you. Um, I have been a pastor here by God's grace for a long time and I have known some of you for a very long time. In fact, I bet sometimes you guys can almost finish some of my phrases that I use. Uh, the opening one, uh, uh, grace, mercy, and peace to you, you could probably finish from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's one of the, call it, the things that a lot of pastors use. I, I do use it uh, uh, in my, before my sermons start. Um, but is there same kind of reaction that you or I might have had to a teacher in school? You listen to them for so long, and then there's the kind of temptation, I know what pastor's going to say tonight or in this paragraph in his sermon. So I'm going uh, to see what the other person is doing across the aisle or look and uh, think about some things that are going on at home. There's that temptation for sure. And Moses is thinking about that kind of thing here because the first thing on his bucket list is the word, listen. He knows that the Israelites are going to get distracted. He know, He's been talking to them for 40 years. That's even longer than I've been here. And they're maybe not listening all the time. He says, hey, this is God's word. This is the life-giving word. You've got to listen, and you and I need to work at that throughout our life, whether we're here or we're watching it at home on TV, listening to the message, not letting the other things get in the way. Now, there's an interesting thing with the Hebrew word here for listen. It has, it has a fuller meaning than just hearing. It, it's definitely hearing. I would say that'd be number one. But it also means to believe, and it also has the idea in it, in it when you listen, you believe and you do. So there's really three things in that word, and I think Moses is thinking of all of those. Now what is it that we're to listen to? He uses the word statutes and ordinances, and those are two very important words here. What Moses is doing is he's pointing um, the people to the law of God and to the gospel promises. And the first one is statutes, actually is more the law. Um, what summarizes God's law for you? You learn this from little Ten Commandments. Now, I'm going to suggest something to you. People look at the Ten Commandments and they go, oh, God is, you know, first commandment, keep God, number one. Okay, and they, they kind of brush over that. And they go to the fourth through tenth commandments, love your neighbor. And I think even, even Christians, but a lot of people look at that and go, ah, you know, if I just love my neighbor, if I'm just a good person, God should like that. God should be okay with that. Well, let's go back to the first three commandments. Love God above all else is the first commandment. He is number one all the time. Number two, revere his name every minute of the day. Number three, listen to his word every week, every day. Think about that word every minute and obey it. Oops, I don't know about you, but I'm already not perfect in that. And here's the thing. Do people really think that they can love their neighbor the way God wants them to if they don't love God the way we're supposed to love him? We don't love our neighbor, which is what God demands. And so 
Moses would call you and me and certainly the people of Israel in his day to repent and say, hey, you need not just God's statutes, you need, statutes, you need not just the, the commands, but you need the gospel promises. That's the word ordinances that comes in there. It's interesting, it's not here in our newer Bibles, but I'm going to go back to the King James Bible. In the King James, it uses the word judgments. And that actually kind of works. Because think about it. God's judgment was poured out on the human race. You think of Noah, a time of the flood. You think of God condemning your sins and my sins in his word. That's God's judgment against us. But who else received God's judgment? Jesus on the cross. He had not his sins, but our sins. And God's judgment, God's wrath came down on him. But that is so wonderful. Because today, now you and I are innocent in God's eyes because we have forgiveness in Jesus and we get to walk in holiness, in righteousness. And do you know what that means? Someday you and I are going to be walking in holiness and righteousness in heaven not because we've earned it, not because we've deserved it. We would deserve to be condemned by ourselves, but because Jesus is our Savior and he took away our sins and he, he did this for us. So the words that Moses shared was not just law and commandments, although that was a part of it, but it was also God's gospel promises, all of God's word, and he wanted them to listen to that. Now, I, I do want to read one quick comment from Moses. He says this, he does to listen to these words so that you may live and so that you may enter the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving to you to take possession of it. Listen to God. He has the plan to save you. He has the right words. And so we do listen. Now, I think though Moses thought that there might be a few people who would say, yeah, okay, you know what? I think I can listen to God's word if I can just maybe shave a few things off or add a little bit, it help me. Um, the Pharisees in Jesus' day, who did they add to God's law? Over 600 human commands. You heard it in the gospel reading. The scrubbing of hands, uh, pitchers, cattle, dining couches. Oh, you had to do that. Or you were not a good believer. You would not be saved. And in fact, what happened was all those laws covered up God's commandments and covered up the truth that we need a Savior and who that Savior was. They didn't even pay attention to it. Are we guilty of adding and subtracting uh, to God's commandments, which Moses forbids? He says, do not add to the word. Uh, do not subtract from it. Well, do you think a pastor has to wear a gown in every worship service? If you think that, you're adding something to the word that the Bible doesn't say. Not every pastor wears a gown. What about um, using the King James ver version of the Bible? I did run into somebody once who just said, this is the only version of the Bible that we can use. And I said, oh, okay, where does it say that in the Bible? And they, they couldn't answer me because it's not there. Now, it's a very fine translation. It's one that most of us grew up with at some point. It's a good Bible, but it's not the only Bible. Uh, God doesn't command which translation we use. Uh, I think we're probably more guilty sometimes of subtracting from God's word. Um, people say babies don't need to be baptized. Um, they're, uh, they're innocent. Well, why does it say that in the Bible? And... As far as I know, the command is baptize all nations. Uh, so you can't take away from the Bible, either, although people today would like to do that. But what happens when you do? Moses says, so that you may live, so that you may enter the land the Lord your God is giving you. Um, God's word, God's commands are a chain. And if you start taking one link out of that chain, what happens? Or you break a link, what happens? The chain falls apart. And so the Lord says, look, don't add, don't subtract. We can explain, we can interpret as long as we're not adding or subtracting, um, but we want to continue to have the Word of God, to listen to it, and to have the wonderful rich blessings in this life and the next life.
Okay, that brings us to back to the bucket list. We've got the next one, which is uh, to practice the word. He says in verse 6, keep them and put them into practice. Um, I, I'm taking the word practice here tonight to mean to make it a regular part of our life. Um, what Moses points out is if you continue to use the word, you will have wisdom and understanding. Aren't wisdom and understanding important in this day and age? So many natural disasters. So many man-made disasters. And I think one reason the Lord may be allowing some of these anyway is it shakes the confidence, the confidence that we have in science. Science is good. does many good things, but it can't do everything. It can't particularly do that, for sure. People work, they turn to certain beliefs. Worshipping nature. Worshipping gods. Remember what happened to the Canaanites and their gods when the Israelites went in to take the promised land? God allowed the Israelites to run right through the country like there was almost nobody there. Um, they had some battles but the, the battles on the battlefield fell apart on the part of the enemy because God was making it happen and the Israelites walked in and took the promised land in many cases. Um, those things do not work. And so, the Mo it, Moses tells the Israelites here, um, continue to practice the word. Continue in the wisdom. What is true wisdom? The wisdom is Jesus. Because you think about it, what's our greatest problem that we face? It's not the weather. It's not a health crisis. It's not even people, although all those things can be problems in our life. What's the greatest problem we face? Facing an angry God. That is the, the worst thing that could ever happen to a person. And so what's the greatest wisdom? Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this world to reconcile us to God, to put us back with God. Jesus Christ came into this world so that when you pray and ask God for help, he's right there for you. He's near. He's answering your prayers. And ultimately, when this time here on earth is over for us, that God takes us to be with him in heaven. That's the most important thing. Everything else in our life, it can be fixed. Or again, if God doesn't fix it, he'll take us home. That is insignificant compared to knowing God and knowing that you are in a right relationship with him. The more we practice using the word, the more we have confidence and we understand God has forgiven me. God is working with me. God is helping me. But it takes practice. You know, athletes and musicians, they, um, entertainers, if they're good at what they do, they really work at their craft. They work hard. So then they step on the sports field step on the stage or wherever they're going to perform, they can do it confidently. Why? Because they've practiced so much they can do it in their sleep. And then they perform well. This is what Moses has in mind here for you and me. God's Word teaches us. Teaches us to pray. When you're having problems, talk to the Lord. And see in the Bible that sooner or later God answers your prayers. As long as you're going to be here on earth, He or your prayers in some fashion. And then also, when you have problems, sometimes you think, Lord, this isn't getting fixed. Maybe he has direction in the Bible. Sometimes God wants us to do things. And they get there are the Ten Commandments, um, different directions that are given in Scripture. They're amazing. People will look at us and say, wow, you are so blessed. Have, have you ever had somebody walk up to you and say, work or, or somebody you know in the name, well, you're, you're so positive, you're smiling all the time. Well, usually what I say is, it's not me, it's Jesus, it's God, you know, witness your faith. I, God just works things out, so I trust him, and you can do the same thing. We are tremendously blessed uh, when we practice the word, when we keep God's word in front of us. Okay, we want to go down the bucket list one more time, and uh, I've got a picture, though, of a man here. Uh, his name is Private William Scott. I don't know if any of you 
ever heard of him. He became famous for one thing, um, and it wasn't a good thing. He fell asleep. He fell asleep at 3 a.m. He fell asleep at 3 a.m. when he was on guard duty. And in the Civil War, in particular, that went you faced a firing squad. And he was set to face a firing squad. The only thing that happened was some guys wrote to Washington, asked Abraham, President Lincoln to, to pardon him, and, and he did. And so the guy was spared. He did not die in August of 1861. Um, but they took guard duty very seriously. And uh, Moses, as he goes down the list, the third word on the bucket list, guard. Guard the word. Um, we do not want to be careless with the word. We do not want to fall asleep spiritually because then uh, that might cost us more than, I mean, it might not necessarily happen to you in a day, uh, even in a week or a time blessings are lost and a person finally ends up losing eternally. Moses calls on you and me to guard the word, not just to practice it, but to guard it um, with our whole being. Um, it gives us an opportunity to think about it. If a person misses church for a while, is there a good reason? Uh, and I'm not just speaking to you, I'm also speaking to the people at home. You know, why do we miss church? Um, the other thing would be is, is, is if, especially if we're spending a lot of time at home, but for those who are here too, uh, are you reading your Bible and praying? And if we aren't, what's getting in the way? What, what, is there something more valuable than spending time with God in the Word and prayer? There really isn't. Now, we do have reasons why we can't come to church. We get sick. There are issues in our life. But we need to be careful. It's interesting when you look at um, the um, Israelites, uh, they, within a generation, uh, lost the word of God. After Joshua's days, uh, they sunk into unbelief, and there was all kinds of problems. It was not good. Um, Moses mentions teaching our children, very important that our, we pray for our children and our grandchildren. And I would suggest this to you. Not only should our children come to Sunday school, but we can continue going to Sunday school by going to Bible class. And even that, then talking about it at home. Um, you know, one of the things we always tell our parents, talk with your kids about God at, in the home. You can do that without kids around. You can do that in, in your marriage, in your life, with your friends, with family members, when you gather with them. Talk about Jesus. Talk about God and all that he does. Um, somebody might say, well, what do we talk about? Moses says, the, the, don't forget the things that your eyes have seen. They were in the desert. God rained bread down from the sky. He never wanted to forget that. They went into battle, and literally the wheels fall, fell off the chariots of the enemy. He says, don't forget that stuff. That's important. God was with you. God was for you, and he blessed you. What do you and I have to remember uh, since we weren't with the children of Israel out walking in the desert? You have this, the events and what sometimes we call them stories of the Bible. Jesus fed the 5,000. There's the glory of the Lord. Fed all those people. Jesus went to battle with Satan in the wilderness and talk about a guy who lost a battle. It's frustrating. The wheels came off for Satan because he kept trying to tempt Jesus and it didn't work. Jesus came right back at him with the Father's word and devil lost. Those are the stories that we want to remember. Those are the events that you want to carry around in your heart and life because those battles are significant as you're fighting battles, as you're living, as you're looking for God to provide the next meal or the next 365 meals. Look to the scriptures. God is there for you. Don't forget. Don't let it. Thing. I want to end with something kind of fun tonight. At least it was fun for me. Words that have been lost. Words that have been lost to the English language. I've got a list of 10. There were 30. If you want, I'll give you the address of where to look it up. I'm just going to read a couple of them. Ambodexter, one who takes bribes from both sides. Slugabed, one who lies long in bed through laziness. <laughs> Momist, a person who habitually finds fault, a harsh critic. I'm not sure moms would like that one. Percher, a person who aspires to highest, higher rank or status. 
ambitious or self-assertive. Um, silly Tonian is kind of a silly or gullible person. Uh, Mary go sorry. I think that but I, I would not want that nickname. A mixture of joy and sorrow. Somebody who goes around there constantly happy and sad. Mary go sorry. And then uh, Dowzebel, uh, someone's sweetheart. Um, I'm not sure those words are ever in the American English language. Uh, I'm sure that even if uh, they were, losing them is probably not a big deal. But you probably know what I'm going to say now, or I hope you do. We don't want to lose the words of God. We can lose these words. But Moses gives us a bucket list. He talks about this. And you can go back and read Deuteronomy 4 and his wonderful, loving warnings that he gives. He calls in his life. Jesus had changed his heart, taken away his sins, and he loved God's word. And now he wants you to do what he was doing, to listen to the word, to practice the word, to guard the word in your heart and life. Don't let go of it. Um, and then you and I, we will be blessed. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Jesus, our dear Savior. Amen. I will join in confessing our Christian faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may leave your offerings uh, in the offering plates at the doorway or you may use our website or mail in your offerings if you're at home. We'll continue with prayer. We use the prayers on page 10 and 11. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation, the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Dear Lord, we remember those who are on our prayer list. 
We especially ask also that you would be with those who are in the New Orleans area, half a million people or so without power yet. We pray for your blessing upon the recovery efforts there. Um, be with our people also in the southwest and south of us who may have suffered damage from the hurricane. Uh, we pray that you would bless and help that recovery as well. And this Labor Day weekend, keep us safe on the roads, watch over your people. We thank you for jobs, for work, um, for careers, for our young people and for all of us who are working. We pray for your continued blessing upon our businesses, factories, uh, companies, and those who bring jobs to those uh, who need work. We pray for your continuing help, especially in these days. Um, hear us, Lord, as we take a moment to bring you our private petitions. We pray this, and now, eternal God and Father, Keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne, to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. We sing after the intro. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God, and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks, for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. You may come forward. I would invite you to rise and we'll join in the song of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We'll sing the closing hymn. Abide, O oh dearest Jesus, among us with your grace, that Satan may not harm us, or we to sin give place. Oh dear Redeemer, among us with your word, and thus shall when hereafter true peace and joy afford. Abide with heavenly brightness among us precious your truth direct and keep us from error's gloomy night. Abide with riches blessing among us bounty. Let us in grace and wisdom grow day through your word. Abide with your protection among us, Lord, our strength. Lest world and Satan fail us and overcome man. Abide, O faithful Savior, 
your command. Grant us and help us to reach home Good evening to everybody. Um, good to see you. I'm wishing you all God's blessings, people here, people at home. Um, the announcements are in the bulletin. We have all the regular classes and groups. Sunday school will start uh, next Sunday, God willing. I'm speaking to the camera, to the families at home. Uh, we're planning on having that here at church. Uh, the other thing that's coming up, and I have a sign-up sheet on the counter, and that is we'd like to put a little choir together to introduce some of the hymns for the new hymnal, um, do a little bit of singing. I'm hoping we can practice on Saturday the 18th and Saturday, I think it's the 25th, and then we're going to be in the Saturday night service with the choir and some new hymnal uh, sheets, and then we're going to be on Sunday morning, the 26th. Um, the new hymnal is not out. I was supposed to get the pastor's copy, and I haven't even gotten that. I haven't gotten that yet. So it's coming, um, but they provided there's a National Hymnal Sunday on the 19th, but we're going to do it one week later. But there will be some things online that the Synod is doing. If you're interested, you can watch, hear choirs. Um, I believe when we do it, there's a choirs that accompany us, at least for the sing-along. Uh, there's that. So um, those are the announcements. The sheet is on the table next to the communion sign-up. We'd love to have any voices we can get. We'd like to have, have a director and uh, an, orga an organist for that, so I'm excited about that. Those are the announcements. Have a blessed week in our Lord. Yeah.